my parents said I always danced. I danced from the time I guess I could walk. And I remember when I was maybe three years old or so, uh, being in the front window and dancing around the living room to music on the radio and hoping that people in the cars passing by would think that was a dance studio. I didn't exactly know what a dance studio was, but that's what I wanted people to think. This was a dance place where people were doing art dance. One, four, and two. Three. You have to immerse your whole self in your work. It won't be whole if you don't put your whole being in it. And your whole being is beyond what you think you can do. <laughs> So when it was time for me to look in the schools that I wanted to attend, I gravitated to Ohio State. What I was surprised about was that with all the fantastic dancers in the class that I entered, I was maybe the only person in the class who had actually had extensive modern dance training. Caramel had modern dance and the greater Cleveland area really celebrated modern dance. It was something that was radiating out into the community. Modern dance was not strange in Cleveland. And then when I was studying dance history, I had the realization that there are people who dance today in the same way they did thousands of years ago. And their dance is functional. They are vital to their communities. The dancer is almost like a priest because the power of their dance brings the rains. It brings blessings. It brings a community together. When I realized that, then I said, I can make my life as a dancer. It's something that can make a difference in people's lives. When I first went to New York, I saw a notice about a new choreographer's concert. And since that's what I've been doing and wanting to do my whole life, I said, I'm going to audition for that new choreographer's concert. So I started working on a solo. It was inspired because I had just read a book called Things Fall Apart by Achebe from Nigeria. It was about the whole culture completely falling apart through the experience of colonialism. At the end of the book, I just cried and cried the soul of that culture, does it still exist? That was a question I asked in this dance. I finished the audition. I came before this illustrious panel. They knew I was not one of their students, and they had not seen me around town. They said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Ohio. They looked at each other like, Ohio? <laughs> That was something that was the beginning of my career in New York City. The next year I started my own company called Sounds in Motion. So we had the Sounds in Motion School and the Sounds in Motion Company. We toured different parts of the country. We were really fierce. I guess for me, the ultimate dance experience of what I'm still searching for and that could be sustained is that there's an experience in the dance where all the dancers become one with the work and so do all of the spectators and it transforms the inner being. That has happened at times. I want it sustained so that my work is known as that. It takes the dancer and the witness to a place of heaven. <laughs>